it's kind of strange feeling I get. I, I'm watching uh, Professor Tate humiliate, uh, you know, Dave Weiss, who's a flat earther. And it was very sad. You know, I do videos making fun of him, but now I've finished watching the video and I kind of thought, you know, there was a time when I fell into the religious shithole and I was all gung-ho believing this when it was all bullshit. When I should have known better because I was needing something. This is before therapy and there was a lot of things, especially my wife, that have pulled me out of that fucking, you know, denying my near-death experience. I looked for every avenue outside of that because what it told me was is that um, I was going to uh, have this bad experience. That's for another video when I talk about what happened during my near-death experience. I, I avoided it. I, I tried desperately my my whole adult life trying to disprove it in every single scientific, chemical, molecular, psychological way that I could. And what happened was there were events when they showed me my life from picking my mother until I drowned and from when I came back until the day this why event this opportunity, I picked, I saw little things that have for no reason other than just being these weird memories stuck in my head. And then throughout my life, they start clicking off. Until the big one, which was crossing the bridge the bridge that was in my video. Except the bridge that was in my video didn't fucking exist. And believe it or not, I didn't know they had built a new bridge across there. I really didn't know. And maybe it was me not wanting to know, but I really didn't know. I didn't know they built a new fucking bridge there. I thought I was going to go be going across the Carquinas Bridge. Because it had been like 15 years. I was going to go down and see friends, see who was still alive. Although you can't go back, trust me. I just thought I'd drive down and check in and just see what was going on. I was looking, especially looking for a friend of mine, Jay Polly. Um, oh, fuck. The feelings... <laughs> The emotional feelings I get when I think about it. I get chills. My head itches. I'm driving in a car. There's only 500 of these fucking cars made. And none of them made it to the public. They were all bought up at the dealerships beforehand. And that was a dual badged uh 280Z that said Nissan and Datsun on the back, both. And they were a gold and black. Except mine had a very special paint job that I had had done that was done with gold marsham. This shit was $5,000, okay? Um, actually, he valued it at $8,000. But I paid $5,000 a, a, a tablespoon, a big tablespoon. That's how rare it was, is gold Mauritian. Okay, it's, it's like mother of pearl, except it's only gold. And that car would change so many colors from a really weird avo light avocado green to a primer gray black flat. It was weird. Weirdest shit I've ever seen in my life. Everybody thought it was different. So that was the fucking car I saw with that fucking paint job on it. The very futuristic looking gold, because you got to remember, okay, this is in the early 60s, this futuristic looking fucking car machine with it was a beautiful gold color sitting in the fast lane of a fucking bridge that did not exist. Parked. Stopped. No other traffic. I don't remember any traffic during that 
picture that I pulled out. And it was from a view of being west of the bridge where it goes in by Vera's Villa Bologna and meets the headland. And I'm looking back this direction and there was two bridges there. I didn't, I, how the fuck could I know that? And when it happened, when I realized I was on that bridge and that I was in the fast lane and that fucking car, I almost had a heart attack. It was the most terrifying fucking moment. I mean, I've had some terrifying moments too. We're talking about microseconds from death in airplanes and motorcycles and shit. And, and this fucking scared me more. It was terrifying. And I realized, how the fuck did they build a bridge without me knowing? And I was freaking the fuck out because it's going to happen. It's, and, I, and I'm expecting this deja vu event. Okay? And I had to pull over and smoke, smoke a bunch of cigarettes, just, just fucking shaking, going, what the fuck just happened? And then I realized that something had changed. This is why everybody in the world is important, okay? Somebody saved me. It wasn't man's God. It was another human being that allowed me to see in a different way and to accept certain things that I, did, that I had to stop denying because that was the last vision. After that, it was blank. I don't have those anymore. I don't see those anymore. I don't have any what comes after this. I mean, that's what I saw right up to that. And then there was a why. This is the, the multi-universe, the, multi -universe, the multi reality thing where people think we're in a simulation and all that. I mean, maybe this is where it comes from, from the near-death experience, because I lived a whole different fucking reality where, and I don't talk about this too much. I've only mentioned it a few times, and anyone who's been on my page long enough will know what I'm saying. Was there, I saw a... I, I tried to justify in my mind my whole life that it was a commentary impact or, or, or iron meteor something. And there, there was a mushroom cloud going up and everyone on the bridge was freaking out. Traffic had stopped and I was thinking only about myself and that I was going to leap from the bridge because that's how strong a sense of survival. I think maybe that was the lesson because I was going to jump from the bridge knowing that water <laughs> is a great insulator of radiation. And I thought there's at least a slim chance if I do this, everyone up here is going to die. And I jumped and I remember being in the water and I could see the shadows. The, the, the water was lit up from other flashes or maybe this flash. I don't know. I don't really don't. Okay, but this, this flash had lit up the water and I could see the superstructures sinking around me, giant girders sinking around me. And then in the other one, I was on the old girder span bridge, the Carquinez Bridge, not the new one. It's weird, okay? There's confusion there why I saw what I saw. And there were a certain number of people on the bridge that I could see they were afraid and I knew why they were afraid because they hadn't died before. These people hadn't died. And they thought that this was it. And that when you died, uh, everything that you loved or, or that loved you, or I mean, that you, you know, the fear of that was overwhelming. And the doubt about why do I even fucking exist and is life just a biological fucking accident? You know what I mean? Smart people who understand how life came about and how we got to where we are right here and understand that's the truth and have no, you know, they're not religious in any sort of way and they, they just go, this is it. And, and I'm supposed to talk to those people. 
they're not dummies. They're not religious either, but they, they sense God, but they can't find a way there. And that's what I spent my whole life doing, evidently. I just, it happened exactly the way it was supposed to happen. Um, I found a person and the bridge to talk to the people instead of committing suicide. See, you're shown things in a way that makes sense to you. So evidently I can commit suicide regardless of the events going around. I think the central point was that that was a suicide. In reality, what that meant was I was escaping my responsibility. I would rather do this selfishly to the ultimate fucking limit rather than do the 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 ninety nine percent thing of turning around and helping these people. The tiniest fraction, fraction, fraction that I might survive this if I jump, versus absolutely knowing that if I just turned around and told these people my experience that it would help them. And that was it. That was the event that led to me starting on YouTube. I didn't I didn't even know that at the time. I was on YouTube for quite some time doing uh, stuff about ice and gaming. And when one day I realized when I got an email from somebody, I had just randomly talked about my near-death experience. And, you know, I always kind of included it. And maybe, see, I was probably supposed to. And then I got a letter from somebody that said that I basically saved their life is how I took it. I was like, oh, shit. I have to take this seriously. And in return, what I got was the riches of just being able to come on here and be myself and not give a fuck what people thought. Just be the truth. One person's truth where you can listen to me for year after year after year after year and everything's always going to be the same, okay, because I'm trying to live that truth. I know all the bad shit that I did. And one of the first things you, you have to do is forgive yourself. You're, you, you're the animal in us is still very strong. Yet you have to admit that. We just haven't matured spiritually, biologically. We haven't, we haven't matured past the point where war isn't our fucking world hobby you know what I mean we can't even get past that yet you, you you look at the ugliness of the world and you understand that the animal is strong but I can tell you that that's that's the squeaky wheel getting the oil there are more good people than there are bad there are more kind people than there are unkind people okay um it's not even close, actually. Most people, you could just disagree with everything about them. Their religion, their politics, their the kind of fucking mayonnaise they like, okay? But if you were in trouble, they'd fucking risk their life to save you. That's just culture and a belief system that, that we... It's going to take another thousands and thousands and thousands of years for us to get past our animalistic behavior, learn how to control our population and educate the population, okay? So that the world isn't, you know, the world is cleaning itself up instead of continuing down this dreaded shithole. And the people on the bridge, they understand exactly the truth. I knew they knew. I could see it in their fucking eyes. They were terrified. They know how fucking bad shit is. They understand. When they wake up in the day daytime, they're like, how come the world can't be like this? It's so simple. Well, that's because you're you're just one of the, you're a, you're a good soul. Not necessarily tough in the world. Some people have great souls and, and they can't make it in the world. They just don't have, they can't compete against this ugly fucking machine that we've created, right? Because we just, well, we didn't know any better. People talk about the, the men who won the West, and I think about my my ancestors getting scalped. You know what I mean? Um, 
the, the reality of the world is pretty fucking ugly, but there's beauty in the world too, and you can't get stuck on that. That's why I like having my, my great granddaughter here because all that goes away. It's another reason I, that I, I probably hurt myself with golf for so long, physically hurt myself. I was great at it, but I hurt myself because it was a catharsis. When I was out there, I couldn't think of anything else, you know? These people that are supposed to, I'm just supposed to give them the path. I'm not supposed to explain to them, okay? But science has reached a point now where they've pretty much pointed the finger and said, oh yeah, God could live here. He could live here. He could live here. The point is, is that the universe, let's just, let's just say 14 billion years just to be, okay, even though now with, the web they're thinking that that, that could be way off um you know their intelligence once it gets to a certain point once the animal has been defeated okay progression is rapid after that point i think you can control inter interdimensional travel you can make muons fields and you can put quarks in there and you can then take those quarks and add them to others and then make atoms, molecules, you know, or protons and make different molecules and, and then create chicken sandwiches or gold fucking bars, okay? Or whatever else you want. Give me a, 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 give me a baseball signed by Babe Ruth. Bam. Because... I mean, that's where you, that's, that's what's possible. That's how you get closer to God, okay? Where the species now understands that there's only one thing of value in the universe. Once you have reached a certain level of technology, the only thing that has any value is life. That's it. Each individual quantum package that's contained on our microtubule system, it's permanent. That's what I'm supposed to tell you. Now, how you go about studying microtubules and how quantum mechanics relates to that, that that's up to you. I'm, I'm not here to tell people what or how to believe. I'm just here to say, this is what happened to me. This is my journey. This is my voyage. And this is how I ended up here where I am today. Understanding everything that happened and having proof just bitch slap me in the fucking face for, you know, 60 years, you finally get the fucking message. I just accepted that that all of that, okay, I, I give. It's proven itself so many times that I have to understand that that's, this is real and, and, <laughs> and I guess that's the, the moment, the epiphany, the moment where I made my decision. And since then, no thought of what could happen at any time, and I feel very rich. Not only can I be a grumpy old fuck, you know, basically has can pick anything apart at any time because reality allows him to do so, I'm also like one of the luckiest, happiest fucking guys in the world. Very content. And this is from knowing that, God, my responsibility is small. I only, I only have to help a small, like, for some reason, I don't know why 24, 25, those two numbers are stuck in my head. Maybe it's 2004, I don't know, 24, 25. That's kind of a, that's a number of people. And why that one makes a difference, I don't know. Maybe one day I will. You're, you are contained in your microtubule system. Information is permanent, but not just permanent, it stays corporeal. The universe is a machine. This universe is a machine to create permanent sentient individuals like us. There are places where these sentient beings when it comes time for them to leave the physical universe, are 
millions of years more advanced than us, billions of years more advanced than us. Who knows what that entails, right? I mean, fuck. Who knows what that entails? I mean, it, your mind could go nuts thinking about the technologies they would have. And I always use the amoeba and the iPhone, right? That's my favorite analogy is try to explain your iPhone to an amoeba. Where do you start? Three guys walk in a bar? No, there's, there's no sense in even getting started, okay? So I felt that I should talk about that today, that I saw this flat earther guy and his belief system that his whole world was wrapped around this thing. His whole fucking, his existence, his very being, the fiber of his being is wrapped around this fucking flat earth idea for whatever satisfaction he gets. The subscribers, the adoration from idiots, I don't, I don't know, okay? But I could see the desperation in his eye as he was destroyed by... Professor Day, because he would jump from subject to subject to subject to subject to subject, because he couldn't, he couldn't say anything actual about anything. It was all belief system, and he could be told something that was an absolute, direct, showable proof, and he would just say, but that's a lie, and therefore, to him, it was a lie. It was a way of shutting down the bricks that were collapsing around him and his reality. And I thought, you know, I, I, I feel sorry for the guy because I understand exactly that sensation. There's been times in my life where my near-death experience, the things that I experienced that it happened, just seemed to fucking happen around me, the events that happened around me, the, the things I've, I mean... I've talked once or twice about the photograph I took on the Russian River. Only, only I know the location that was so scary that people would, were, I can't explain it. I can't explain it. Um, a, 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 a no good chick stole the negatives and all that stuff from me. And you know what? I, I'm like, thank you. you. You got that out of my life. Cause we were gonna, we were gonna like do posters and a fucking jigsaw puzzle and all kinds of shit because this, this photograph was, and I'll, I might, I might try to, I might try to explain it one another day. Okay. Um, I've just seen too much and had too many outside bizarre, crazy experiences in my life that they, they just possessed me all the time. And I had to explain them. I had to have a, how the fuck am I, you know, am I crazy? No, quantum mechanics. I started understanding how unreal and I started actually believing and seeing this as unreal. When my granddaughter runs in, I know that she's in that body, that that's a real, that's a real being in there. It's not just a biological body. There's a quantum entity in there that will live forever and that it loves me. Isn't that cool? How, how could I be richer? So, I don't know. For, it's been borrowed time. Ever since, ever since the bridge incident, it's been borrowed time. I, I, I had a flashback about it when I watched this guy because he's desperately trying to fend off this thing. And I, I had done that for so long, trying to fend it off. And it would just, it just, it would just kept bitch slapping me with reality, like, like Professor Dave did to him. Reality just kept crashing in on me going, well, look, it's either this or you're fucking crazy. Which one is it? Sometimes I thought I'd weather say I was crazy. No responsibility in that, you see. But YouTube, of all things, was the bridge. You see that when it couldn't exist any other way for me to have these strangers hear me, okay, on a bridge because they were lost and they were scared and they were terrified that when death, that death was the end because then they thought, well, why live at all 
And that leads to bad thoughts. And I'm supposed to tell everybody, everyone has a, a you're supposed to, there is a amount of information that you created that was going to make you permanent without following through, without doing exactly as this information node you created, okay? Unless it gets played out here, can't continue. So you want it to play out the way you said it would play out. And suicide is not one of those ways. You simply go back. And like they told me, oh, you can stay here forever if you want, because see, time doesn't matter there. But you will want to go back because you'll want to be with God. When you're shown God, there won't be any choice but to be with God. And you will go back and you will go back and be born at the same day, go to the same school, kiss your first person. You know what I mean? until you make that different decision. And it can just be anybody in your life, anything that you've done for someone else. If there, are, there are events, there are, there are ways for us to change the direction of our lives, as long as it's for the positive and for others and to not, oh, my amplifier's on, and to not be selfish, okay? Um, you're your brother's keeper. If we were all just a little kinder to one another, the world would be different. And we all know that. And that's such a simple answer, isn't it? So the animal, okay? Don't, don't, the, the, don't, everybody's done stupid shit in their life. It's the animal is very powerful and very strong. He's the one that, that will make you drown someone else because you're trying to climb on top of him so that you don't drown. That's the animal, okay? It's very powerful and it's, it's hard to fight that fear, okay? But you just have to look at it as that. It's a biological, mechanical thing that's happening to you so that your survival instinct is telling you, you know, that's uh, the number one thing here, survive. Like I said, I lost fingernails the second time I drowned trying to claw myself up these rocks because the the urge to survive, you know what I mean? That's the fear you feel with death. Just look at the reality. Look at the holographic principle of reality. That's one theory you could look at. And then again, okay, Hammeroff and Penrose have been doing work on microtubules and that was it for me. Hammeroff talked about microtubules in the late 80s and I immediately stuck to that. But all of a sudden here I am towards this goal and lo and behold, Penrose and Hammeroff are now working on microtubules because Penrose is coming to conclusions where he's looking for something and he won't talk about it because he doesn't like to, okay? But you can tell by his art and the way he explains things, right? That he's a colorful soul. You see, he's coming to realizations like I did that, okay, so if it's going to be like that, how about this? So, and just remember, hundreds of thousands of people have near-death experiences every year. It's not, it's, this is very common, and I think that's where religion came from. You know what I mean? Um, and again, if, if we're going to be corporeal and we're going to be made of information, okay, maybe there are times when it can be accessed. And so ghosts and weird shit that happen in life, stuff that I've experienced that had to be quantum mechanical, quantum events, I will explain them as quantum events, okay? And, and no denying them, they happened. It, it shouldn't, it's against everything scientific that I believe, but it did happen, there's no more fighting it, okay. And now deal with it. How the fuck are you gonna explain that? Quantum mechanics did it quite well. Yeah, the more we learn, the more the animal gets beaten down, see? So, anyway. I tried to make 30 minutes and it's 29 minutes and 18 seconds. So I think I've gone on enough, right? So everybody's important.